Okay, welcome, and it's uh, my great pleasure to introduce and bring to you Chen Chao, who is a wonderful violinist, member of the San Francisco Symphony, and professor at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music as well. So thank you for doing this, Chen, and welcome. Thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> Yay. So, uh, you know, we've known each other for, for many years now. Um, I used to be at a lot of the symphony rehearsals and concerts. Uh, that's how we met. I was assistant conductor for MTT with the San Francisco Symphony. And I had the pleasure of meeting you as well as many of your colleagues. And, you know, we've always stayed in touch and you've been always kind and you've come to many of our performances here in Davis or in Sacramento. Uh, I've had the pleasure of featuring some of your extremely, extremely fine students as our soloists. And I plan on continuing to doing so. Uh, so you're an amazing, amazing teacher. So here's a free form kind of interview in which we can talk about all sorts of things that maybe you can start by telling us how you're dealing with this downtime. The symphony is not playing, the opera is not playing. What does a professional musician of your caliber do during this time of quarantine? Well, I can't speak for others because I haven't seen them in person, but um, for, for me, I think, well, I was a little bit sick for the first two weeks. I think it was just a cold. And then the last week, starting last week, I've been practicing and I've been doing some musical clips with my wife. And uh, we've actually never played together. And she's, she's also a singer. So we, uh, she, we, she sang with me and symphony colleagues in concerts, but she's never played on a uh, piano with me in the recital. So we decided to work up some encore pieces for fun. Oh, wonderful. And, uh, um, yeah, which we will, I will sh um, share with you one of the, uh, one of the two pieces, I guess, a Rachmaninoff Daisies or the uh, Prokofiev um, Gavat. Um, so we plan to, I plan to make more music clips, videos for the symphony, for the conservatory, for uh, Instagram, just to kind of get the music out because uh, this, this, um, this incident is really, really unfortunate. Um, you know, a lot of people are suffering, uh, a lot of people are dying. So I, I want to be able to share some music. Um, and I certainly cannot do that in any public space or concert halls. Uh, it may be a very long time before people feel comfortable going to a concert hall or any venues. Um, but I think this is a perfect time to learn some new repertoire and, and to be able to, yeah, to be able to play things that I normally wouldn't play. Right, so, right. Yeah, so I'm really looking, I certainly got really inspired to, to practice and to play. Um, this is sort of like an unplanned sabbatical. <laughs> so I've always said, oh, you know, one of, these, one of these years I'll take a sabbatical, but I just couldn't do it. You know, I got students at the conservatory and I got youth orchestra and I got, you know, work at the symphony and it's nonstop and it's absolutely, it's like a nonstop music festival. It's a right. lot of fun. I don't want to miss out, so I don't want to stop. Um, so this is sort of a forced uh, <laughs> uh, sabbatical. And then I, you know, try to look at it in, in a positive way and try to stay healthy, try to do my part for social uh, distancing and all that. Super. Okay, so let's, um, I'm gonna have a lot of questions for you yeah, sure. uh, with regards to your, your work as a teacher. But before we get there, let's talk about um, your work as a, as a musician in, in one of the greatest orchestras in the world, the San Francisco Symphony. So tell us how long have you played with the symphony? Um, how did you join? Which orchestra were you playing with before then? Um, what are some of your favorite things about playing with the symphony? Um, well, I was very lucky that I um, got the job in 2000 when I was 25. Um, so I came from New World Symphony and I went to, I went to Curtis for bachelor's and the San Francisco Conservatory of Music for master's and then went to New World for about nine months. And that was a great orchestra and it really motivated me to practice for all the excerpts and do all the uh, auditions. So I really owe a lot to them. Um, and I joined, yeah, I joined in the summer of 2000. So it's been um, 20 seasons almost. Wow. Yeah. 19 seasons and I think one of the I I uh, I was on the let's see the first thing I did was the European tour with San Francisco Symphony 
And uh, we hardly rehearsed anything because the orchestra knew the pieces. So I had to jump in and learn the Rite of Spring, which I've never played, and a lot of Stravinsky pieces. And, and, and I remember I circled every rest in the Stravinsky, just to make sure I don't come in wrong. Because I really, you know, never played it before. I've heard it, of course, but I haven't played it. I didn't know it that, I didn't know it as well as the others at that time, and especially at the rehearsal. And I think they only rehearsed it once, I remember, before playing at the BBC prompts. Uh, so it's a big learning curve at first. Um, but after a few years, I think, you know, you get to know most of the repertoire. Um, but, the, you know, as a violinist, there's always something new. So it's always something to look forward to, something challenging. So it's... Yeah, it's a, it's 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 a really uh, inspiring job. I bet, I bet. So, what would you say over the course of these nearly twenty seasons you play with the symphony? What are some of those f three, four favorite projects you've been involved with? And you know, I know that you, you've pretty much been there. MTT has been music director for twenty five seasons, so pretty much throughout his tenure, you've been there. But you've also worked with, you know, countless guest conductors. Uh, so, if you had to choose some of these, you know, favorite projects of yours, and it might be really tough to say three or four, so feel free to wander around and, and just some recollections of what, what are some of the experiences that you, you think are, you know, priceless and only in a place like San Francisco Symphony you can experience that. Well, I think the, certainly all the recording projects with MTT was really exciting. Um, and I remember a couple, of, you know, we did all the Mahler projects and Beethoven symphonies and um, Copeland. Um, a lot of things, it happened very quickly and it was all recorded live and years later I get to watch these uh, um, on, you know, YouTube or DVDs and it's really wonderful, you know, and especially to see everybody and, um, you know, looking so young too, <laughs> you know, some of them are like, was taped quite a few years ago and, and now recently, well, the symphony released a lot of these uh, keeping score videos, which is really educational. I learned a lot from these videos. Um, and MTT gave a lot of insights and then he traveled all, all around the world to film these. And it was a big project and I'm so grateful to be part of that. And another great thing about playing the symphony is um, seeing amazing soloists coming in every single week. It really is inspiring to see how some of them, you know, how prepared they are, how effortless they are on the instrument. Um, I've learned a lot from just watching them. And I think, you know, as a student, you learn a lot from watching great players play. And I certainly, I would say 60% is from, you know, what I see, imitate, you know, and from recordings or uh, live performances, um, et cetera. Wonderful. Now, I imagine you also play a lot of chamber music. Uh, so I, I've seen you also play, there are some wonderful recordings out there of you playing concertos as a soloist. So you're a versatile musician yourself. You're a member of the symphony, but you have your own personal projects of your own as well. And that, I think that's, that's so important and, and you know, keeps everything fresh. Yeah. Uh, what are some recommendations you would have for any young musician? You know, there's this whole, um, you hear some people, you know, especially in a conservatory training that they say, oh, I don't want to join an orchestra. I want to play chamber music only, or I want to become a soloist. Uh, some people can have it all, but it's, it's not easy. So what would you say to somebody coming up with this mentality of, I only want to do this, or I only want to do that? Yeah, I think all of us go through that period, uh, especially in school. Uh, when I was in school, when I was at Curtis, um, I actually met three wonderful young musicians same age, we were all 19 years old at Round Top Music Festival. Um, and we formed a quartet. Um, and we studied with uh, Martin Lovett of the Amadeus Quartet. So we were in London. Uh, we did some concerts in uh, Oklahoma and Texas and California. Um, and it was, it was so, it was so um, motivating and it was so inspiring. And I was, and also kind of gave me a lot of confidence in, in performance. And, you know, chamber music is such an intimate form of um, music making. And I learned so much from ensemble playing, you know, in that quartet. And we played for about three years. Wow. And I, at that time, I really thought I wanted to just play chamber music for a living. You know, I was young. I had no idea what making a living is, you know, what that means to me. But I just thought that's exactly what I wanted to do. 
Um, but then um, later on, um, and uh, when the quartet disbanded, I realized it is very difficult to stay together as a string quartet because uh, people all have uh, different professional paths. And some people want to finish school earlier or go to another school or for family reasons. So it is very difficult to keep four, it's like a four-way four -way marriage. Yeah. Uh, it's very <laughs> difficult to keep in one place. Um, so at that time, I you know, had an opportunity to audition for New World, and I did. And that kind of opened up a whole new door for me. Um, so I, I took that experience from, you know, ensemble playing, everything, what I've learned from playing string quartet and put that into orchestral um, playing. And um, so, and of course, you know, I had to learn to stay in rhythm quite well because, you know, with 30 people playing, you really have to have impeccable rhythm. And that's what they look for in, uh, that's one of the things that they look for in the orchestra auditions is if violin is actually has good internal rhythm. Um, so that's, yeah, so that's, um, I learned a lot from, from that uh, new world too. Um, and um, for, as for advice for people, uh, for students, um, I think it's very important to follow um, what you really love in school because you really never know what you will actually end up doing. Um, if you plan to do something, if you're determined to be an orchestra music musician, that doesn't mean it could work out. Or if you're determined to be a soloist or chamber music, all things could, anything can happen. And uh, so, and I think it's important, what I try to do when I'm teaching is trying to train everyone to do very versatile, you know, be able to play chamber music, be able to play as a soloist, be able to understand how to switch back and forth. Um, like what, you know, soloist playing has a lot, is very, you know, in some ways similar, but also different from orchestral playing and also likewise chamber music. Um, so, because you have to understand the acoustics and you know, the space that you play in. So I think, I think the, you know, the more students know about everything, then the more chance they have for um, um, opportunity in music. Excellent. Thank you. Now, as much as you know, you, you live through incredible, amazing uh, experiences in the symphony, I wonder about any downside you could talk about any, anything, you know, some people, those who, who say, you know, that, who, I'd like to play in a string quartet only because I can, I can discuss interpretation and I choose and, you know, whereas I'm, if I'm in a symphony, I have to do whatever the conductor wants or whatever the concert master is telling me how to do it. So what are some of these, whether regarding that artistic decisions or anything related to, you know, a particular rehearsal you might have remember 10, 15 years ago when something didn't go as planned. Any other experiences you can tell us that are, are sometimes some of the downside of playing in, in, in an orchestra? Well, I think I wouldn't call it downside, but I feel every week I, my job is to really interpret it the conductor's idea because it's it's actually really refreshing to have different ideas and some people not all musicians are meant for orchestra playing right because there are people who are determined to do their own style and they don't want to listen to anyone else and they don't want to play you know any other styles and so those uh, musicians get you know i mean they could also make it as a um you know soloist and you know they could have a very very successful uh, um be a successful YouTuber and, and make a living on top of that. So, but the thing is that orchestra is more of a team work. Um, so for team, in order to, for that to work, I think you have to um, not, I wouldn't say put aside your musical ideas, but kind of combine and to kind of be able to really adapt very quickly. And that's a unique skill uh, to have. Um, I think for, yeah, to, so for, so, so I, I don't have any problems trying new ideas, you know, they, they don't always work. I mean, for example, uh, we sometimes have guest conductors and come in and, and, you know, play something that we play all the time, you know, and it takes the tempo really on the extreme side, you know, if it's slow or it's fast. And then, you know, at rehearsals, we might feel, whoa, this, this is really, really, really slow compared to what we normally do. You know, it's uncomfortably slow, um, you know, Part is because we have muscle memory of that, you know, it just feels, oh, you have to do different bowings and things like that, work it out. But sometimes I find surprises too, where in the rehearsal, I don't feel very comfortable. And whereas in the concerts actually turn out to be really inspiring. Um, so that can also happen. And, and I think 
one of the downside that would be maybe just as a violinist because the repertoire, um, because in or orchestra music, the violinist always has something to play. So we constantly playing. So it's very, very easy to injure yourself. Yeah, and I think a lot of composers, um, they, they're not aware that violinists can actually wear out and break down, you know, when, when the piece is, um, you know, over an hour long, when there's no rest at all, it, you can't hold up the violin for that long. So that, I would think that would be the downside. So um, for any new composers out there, you know, make sure that you give violinists some breaks so you can just, even if it's just a few seconds sometimes, you know, to get the blood circulated and everything. So you feel refreshed and be able to do the music that, you know, the composers write. Um, so that, I think that would be, you know, one of the um, downsides that I can think of. That's such an important point. And, and I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned it. And I wonder if you've played much opera because that also can take such a toll when you're playing, you know, a long four hour opera. Uh, or even three hours. There is a yeah. there is an intermission, but you're playing a lot of the time. So yeah, I can't quite do that. I've done a couple of operas, of course, um, but um, it's it's hard for me. I can't I can't hold the violin for that long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, but I think you have to find a really comfortable posture, and um, yeah, it's 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 hard for me to play opera. Do you do much in terms of stretching or warming up physically right before you go onto the stage? Ideally, yes, I should do all that stuff, but <laughs> you know how it is, you know, I got- You're always know, rushing to get in there on time. When... That's right, you know, the traffic, and then, you know, you have students right before the uh, rehearsals or concerts, and then you end up, you know, I gotta grab something to eat, and yes, I mean, I try to allow at least 30 minutes to warm up for uh, rehearsals um, or concerts generally. Um, uh, but yeah, occasion you know, occasionally you know, run a little late here and there. Um, but I'm I try I try to make you know a thirty second sort of a uh, thirty thirty second thirty minutes is the rule. Yeah, so I can actually relax and you know maybe get a cup of coffee and not feel like I have to rush straight into a rehearsal. Right. Now you're a very open musician, and I I remember distinctively an opportunity when I, I was there in the audience and I saw you, um, MTT was conducting the premiere of one of his pieces mm. and you were participating in various ways. You wanna tell us a little bit about that? I saw you do things on stage, like dance or being dragged or doing things that- Oh, that, was, the, uh, that was MTT's, uh, oh boy. Yeah, that, well, there was some, some kind of a semi-stage performance. Exactly. That we had to learn to dance. Actually, I learned some dance moves from the dancers uh, I saw you rocking there on Davis Hall, doing all sorts of, of things. Fun. That was a lot of fun, yes. <laughs> Memorable. Yeah. yeah, but you know, not, not every musician would be as open as you are to say, yeah, sure, I'll do this, I'll dance. Yeah, you gotta pull me and take me over there? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> That's why I think we ended up in the laundry basket. You know, Indeed. <laughs> yes, I'm a, I think it was about four, four violinists. <laughs> <laughs> so it's part of the show. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, you know, once in a while, I think it's really fun to kind of get outside of the comfort zone and do something really creative. And it's all part of, I don't know, entertainment and, and uh, you know, semi -produc semi stage productions and sort of like Broadway shows. Yeah, so, it was yeah. so engaging for the audience. I felt that every, everybody, you know, reacted yeah. to that in a certain way that, you know, it wasn't expected and it, it really made a lot of sense and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so uh, I'm going to ask you now, moving on to, to your role as a professor, somebody who is really mentoring the next generation of wonderful violinists. Um, you've been in the conservatory a number of years as well, and you were a student there. You, you just said you, made, you did your master's degree there. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you see your role? I mean, you, you receive already violinists who are incredibly competent when they come to you. How do you see your job? What do you do for them during this possibly two years that they're there doing a degree? And I believe one of the degrees they do is it's a training for concert master, isn't it? Yeah. Well, also I have the four year bachelor's program. Yeah. So I think everyone, as, as you know, there are millions of violin, violinists in the world. So everyone comes from a different background, how they learn. And um, so everyone has a different style of playing, different postures. Um, so I try to, you know, when they come to the class and then everyone 
you know, everyone has different needs. So I think I try to absorb, um, just look by looking at how they play and how they sound and then their postures. And I try to um, fix a few things, you know, so whatever makes them easier. I mean, my, I, my goal is to make their violin playing easier and help them also understand uh, music and how to phrase things. If somebody needs the, uh, you know, more ideas for phrasing um, or a technical passage that need to play and um, you know, whatever they came up didn't really work. So I would, you know, try to, try to, um, you know, help them in any way I can. So I think every, I don't, so I don't follow a certain method of, and, you know, I think maybe for beginner teachers it's important to have a more of a, you know, kind of a, a teaching method. But for me, I think it's just, you know, I, I kind of do what I've learned from my teachers. Felix Gallimere, Camilla Wicks, Amadeus Quartet members like Martin Lovett, um, uh, the, and, uh, you know, and also my high school teacher, Hitro Yama, you know, I learned, a, I learned with them for a long time. So I kind of taken their ideas um, you know, of how they fix things. <clears throat> Excellent. And so how would you, which advice would you give to somebody who wants to study with you or one of the other violin teachers at the conservatory? What to take into consideration when preparing an audition for you? Which kind of repertoire to play? How to how to get ready for it? Well, I think for auditions, you just um, you have to you know it's hard to uh, you know you have to be prepared and you have to sound good and you know have your own ideas, characters, and be able to play in tune and and um, and I think very important is uh, uh, you know a lot of people can play the notes but they're not able to bring the audience to a different place, you know, musical journey. So it's important to look into that. Um, so I think, you know, being prepared to a certain level, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, every school except people at different levels too. So it's hard to say that it's not a mathematical equation. It's not like a certain number that you have to meet. Um, so it's, um, I think, and I think for students, it's important to um, know what, you know, what, what the teachers, how the teachers play and how, you know, how they teach. So it's important to uh, take a lesson from uh, a teacher that you actually want to study with. Um, but sometimes in, you know, yeah, you, you'd be surprised, you find things, you know, you sometimes um, one can be a very great player, but then they don't articulate so much on how to fix your playing. You know, they know you can certainly learn from, you know, watching them play but they don't really know how to do that. So, right. or, or, you know, your playing is a bit too different and, you, you know, so it's, so I think it's, it's important to take lessons from, from teachers. Yeah, so cool. I think one of the ways you can do that is you can contact them privately or you can do that in music festivals. That's actually a great way to meet a lot of artists. Excellent. So we're approaching the, the end of this uh, interview journey and, I'd like to ask you just to 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 finish up uh, your fav your three favorite violin concertos and your favorite few pieces to play with the symphony. Well, now uh, okay, hmm. let me think. Violin concerto, it only changes all the time. You know, the thing that's about being in the symphony is that I'm constantly in inspired by a lot of guest artists. Um, you know, pieces that I when I was growing up I didn't like, like Stravinsky violin concerto. Now I love it because I heard so many great players play. You know, Kavakas and, um, you know, I think uh, Vadim Repin, you know, it's all these great artists come and have their own interpretation and then, you know, changed my mind. So I really, I think in college, I used to have a lot of favorites. I used to listen to a lot of 1920s to the 1950s recordings uh, because all these wonderful violinists have very different styles. So I was really into that. Um, but that that's changed a bit too. You know, now I'm really want to hear new ideas. I want to hear new players. So it's, it makes it really fun. And I think it's, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I could say that I love Stravinsky or Brahms or Beethoven concerto right now, but tomorrow maybe something else. <laughs> and then the same thing with symphony too. It really depends on sometimes there's maybe a symphony that you play many times and you're not particularly attached to it. And then you have a guest conductor that comes in and, you know, has just in, incredible interpretation of it. And you begin to like that piece. Um, so it really, I think because we're playing so much music and then I try to keep my mind 
you know, keep my uh, mind open to accept new ideas. And it's not always, you know, it's not always, you know, my favorites, but sometimes I get a lot, you know, I, it helps me to understand um, because you see a lot of parallels between what um, each composer has in this mind. And then sometimes you play, after playing Rite of Spring, and then you begin to understand what Stravinsky Concerto is all about. So I think that helps me. Um, I, I learned a lot because of that. Because of orchestra music, I've learned to be a better violinist. That's wonderful. And it really once more highlights your, your openness and how I think this, this makes you the, the unique kind of musician that you are. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And you know, I've really enjoyed chatting with you and, and sharing more about all the things that you do with, with more people. Thank you so much. Take care.